Hey, gorgeous soul, and welcome to another episode of New Age Hipster Radio Podcast. On the show today, I am going to talk to you about the Lion's Gate. I've actually gone down a massive rabbit hole of researching the Lion's Gate. I'm really, really excited to share with you what I found out, as well as to just kind of share some of my own thoughts and opinions and ideas and beliefs around what it is, what we can do with it, how we can kind of tap into this really potent energy that's available to us at this time. So for those of you who are brand new to spirituality, who just got here yesterday, you might never have heard of the Lion's Gate. If you've been around for at least a year or even actually everyone's posting about it already. So, you know, you probably, you've probably heard about the Lion's Gate. And so what it is essentially is it's a portal and we can talk about what portals are in a second. And um, a lot of people are like portals. What, what does that even mean? Are they even real? Like what's going on? Um, but essentially it's described as a portal that opens just before the 8th of the 8th. It's, it's said to open on the 26th of July till the 12th of August. That's the kind of date that people are going with for when this portal is open. But it said that it reaches its peak on the 8th of the 8th. So why is it called Lion's Gate? Because it happens in the sign of Leo. So we're in Leo season and it's very connected to Leo energy. So what does this all mean? <laughs> like, what is this? What is this all about? All right. So I have been a big fan of the Lion's Gate for many, many years. I love a good portal. I love a good portal. When the new age community and the woo woo witchy starseed communities start getting into something, I'm like, oh, what's that? I want a piece of that. I want to find out more about that. So it said that this is a really beautiful portal for very powerful portal for manifestation. That's one of the one of the reasons that people have really kind of um, gotten excited about this because we have it occurring on the eighth of the eighth. So in numerology, eight is a very powerful number of abundance, financial prosperity, success it is also a very spiritual number it is the number of infinity you can go on your own journey and go down a whole rabbit hole of what does number eight mean but it is a number that people like a lot <laughs> because of its connection to prosperity material wealth infinity spirituality it's just like What's not to what's not to like, right? What's not to like with the eight? So that's part of the reason that we've kind of jumped on the bandwagon here of like, oh, let's make it about prosperity, let's make it about financial success, and let's make it about manifestation. Which of course it is and it can be, but there's other things going on here too. So I've, I've, like I've said, I've jumped all over it. I've been really into it the last few years. I've kind of been into it from the perspective of, okay, I'm going to just kind of do my thing. I'm going to connect with the energy of the Sirius star and the Sirius star system, which has a lot of connections with ancient Egypt. And so this is another reason that people are excited about it because people love ancient Egypt. We love connecting with the ancient Egyptian deities, at least I do. So that's another reason that we're, you know, we're, we're excited about this. So like I said, I got into it. I was connecting with it. I was, um, you know, previous years I've called on my Syrian guides. I've worked with Thoth and Isis and all of these beautiful beings to kind of guide me through this portal and what I've used this portal for and what I use any portal for whenever somebody's talking about portal opening we have the 88 portal we have the 1111 portal we have the solstice portal we have the equinox portal we have a whole bunch of portals that are <laughs> opening up all the time um, and you know anything can be a portal right 
And you do not need to wait for one of these magical days before you go, okay, I'm going to move through and shift and change and release and go to the next, the next incarnation of me, the next, um, you know, the next chapter. You don't need to wait for one of these, but when they happen, it can add a little bit of a, of a boost to your, to your magic. So what I like to do on these days is really kind of just go through this process of what do I want to let go of? And more than anything, these portals are just really beautiful times to just stop and pause and take a moment to think about where you're at. Where are you at on your life journey? Are you happy with the direction that you're going in? What is weighing you down? What do you not want to take through with you? And then you can write some stuff down. You can do some spell work. You can do some Kundalini yoga. You can do some prayer, whatever your thing is. And you can let all of that stuff go. And then you can sit in this portal energy of this space in between. These portals are kind of like you step through, you leave what you don't want to take with you. You step into the portal and then you're like, okay, here I am like activating, shifting, changing. It's almost like you can almost visualize it, I guess, as like stepping into a cocoon and it's like, okay, I'm in the portal. Stuff is happening, even if I don't know what it is. And then you step out onto the other side and on the other side, that's where all of the news is going to come in. So that's, you know, your opportunity to set some intentions as to what it is that you want to take with you into the next chapter. Like, who do you want to be? What do you want to experience? All of that kind of stuff. So it's really like, you know, it's kind of spiritual development slash manifestation 101. You release what you no longer want to carry with you. You set intentions for the next chapter. And so I like to see these portals as, you know, almost like physical portals, like these gateways that we walk through. And before you, when you're standing outside the gateway, like we are now in this, um, it's a 26 today. So it's kind of the opening of the portal as I'm recording this. And we stand outside the portal. We're kind of in the portal, the energy of the portal, but you know, the, the main part of it is in front of us and we can stand there and we can say, all right, what, am I ready to shed? What am I ready to release? And one of the visualizations I like to do is I like to see myself with like a little backpack and I'm standing in front of this, like this, um, this gateway and I've got my little backpack and I'm like, Ooh, what do I need to take with me? And what can I let go? And I visualize myself taking the backpack off, opening it up and having a look and seeing what's in there. Oh, there's some beliefs that are like, Oh, I'm not this enough. I'm not that enough. Oh, I'm not like getting enough likes on my YouTube videos, on my podcast, you know, all of that stuff. And it's like, okay, I'm going to just put that stuff down and, you know, whatever else you kind of see and whatever else you find in there, you might also find in your backpack that you have some things like, oh, wow. Okay. I didn't know that I actually had a bit more self-confidence or I had, you know, this this self-love that I've been working on and all these things. It's like, yeah, I definitely want to keep those. So you, you know, you repack your bag and you're like, all right, the stuff that I don't want, I'm going to leave down here. The stuff that's coming with me, I'll put back in my backpack. And then you can start to kind of move forward. And as you move forward, you can start to set intentions for like, okay, but what do I want to experience? What do I want to kind of have with me on the other side? And as you move into the, the gateway, You can then see your guides, your angels, the Syrian star beings can come to you and they can put things in your backpack. Like they can give you blessings, support, guidance, you know, whatever it is that you need. And then, you know, you step out the other side and you're like, oh, wow. okay, I really shifted some stuff. I received some cool blessings. This was amazing. So that's kind of been my process. Um, You know, that's a very like simplified version of of what what it is for me there's a lot more going on than that but that's kind of the the nutshell version so I've done that like the last few years and I've really enjoyed it and I've really tapped into it and I've definitely felt this really beautiful connection with the Syrian star beings um, that for me has just been amazing I might talk more about that in a second but what I did this year um, as we were coming into this portal I was kind of sitting with it and I was thinking, what 
actually is this? <laughs> like, what is going on? <laughs> like, it's people are talking about Sirius and ancient Egypt and this numerology of 8 8, and it's like, how can all of this really be? How can all of this go together? And so I went on a really deep dive, and I've done this in previous years, but never really found the information that I was looking for. You know, like the problem with modern spirituality is that you Google this stuff, right? Like you Google Lionsgate 88 or whatever you're Googling, something along those lines, and you get a whole bunch of blog posts, and you get blog posts from like Glamour magazine, from the Herald Sun from like all these different just a whole bunch of different blog posts and every time you click on one it's just like people are kind of just saying the same thing oh it's the connection with Sirius and Egypt and the 88 and it's a magical portal and you can manifest and it's really cool and it's like okay like that's that's cool but I already knew that you know like I already knew that like what's the history of it where did it come from why are we doing this uh, and this is something that I'm getting more and more into. I've always been a little bit like this, where I've always wanted to know why we're doing things, much to some of my teachers' um, dismay, or not really dismay, but maybe um, discomfort. <laughs> As you can see, you can hear when uh, I did a, a podcast recently with Dot Winter. It's amazing. She's an amazing, amazing healer, and I actually trained with her the energy healing that um, some of the energy healing courses that I've done I did with her and uh, she spoke in that interview about uh, an instance where I had disagree with, d d disagreed with her and questioned some of the, the teachings and I am very much that person and when I did my kundalini yoga teaching teacher training I was questioning a lot <laughs> Um, so I want to understand, you know, I want to know, like, are we just doing this? Are we just getting on the bandwagon here? Are we just seeing that someone's like 8-8 eight, eight Lionsgate and we're like, cool, yeah, 8-8 eight, eight Lionsgate. But do we really know what it is or what it means or why we're celebrating and connecting with it? So I went onto a Google and I was like, right, what is the truth <laughs> about Lionsgate? What's really going on? And in previous years, I haven't been able to find a lot. This year I went a little bit deeper. So essentially what's happening here is that we have a heliacal rising of Sirius. Now I hope I'm saying heliacal right because I actually had to watch on YouTube how to pronounce that because I just read it in places. I'm not an astrologer, okay? If you're an astrologer and I'm saying this wrong and this is not even correct information, please let me know. Um, although I have... <laughs> I have source checked this. I have fa fact fact checked this. So, um, but you know, do your own, do your own fact checking. Always, always, always. Because um, I don't think we're doing that enough in the spiritual community. I think we're just reading other people's blogs and we're like, oh, so and so said this, and somebody else said that. So the heliacal rising of a star and we're talking about the heliacal rising of Sirius, the Sirius star, happens when a star has been behind the sun for a long period of time. So we haven't really seen it in the sky for, for a while. And then what happens is it, it starts to shift and move. I don't know what's happening up there, but things are shifting and move, <laughs> moving around. And then what we have is a heliacal rising and it's the first time that the star it rises like just before the sun so we can see the star rising like the, like how you get the um, you know the when Venus rises and you see the morning star and it's Venus right it's that kind of thing um, and so Sirius the star comes up and it rises just before the sun comes up so the heliacal rising is like the first time that we see that star again basically in the in the eastern sky at sunrise so when does this happen now i went on like a huge a huge journey trying to find out okay so this is what we're talking about here is the heliacal rising of sirius but where and when and how can it possibly be on the 8th of the 8th like how this seems like a really big coincidence to me that we're celebrating 
this happening on the 8th of the 8th. And what I found out, gorgeous souls, is that the Halaical Rising of Sirius in Egypt at the moment, in Cairo, in Egypt, is on the 8th of the 8th. <laughs> So this is a fact that I finally found out and I will tell you, it was so hard to find that out. It was so hard to find that out. I actually had to like sign up to this um, astrology website and like type in the longitude and latitude of Cairo to find out like what was happening. And I was like, wow, okay, it is actually on that day. And I read some other, some other people's blog posts about it as well. And this is part of the reason that we're all very excited about the Lion's Gate right now, because it lines up perfectly. The Halaical Rising of Sirius lines up perfectly at the moment with the 8th of the 8th. And this is a rare occurrence. And I think it's only going to be like another 10 years. I think it stays on the 8th of the 8th for like 10 years or something. And then it moves on. So it's, it's not in a couple of years, it'll be on the 9th of the 8th. But we'll probably still say it's the 8th of the 8th because we'll be like, oh, it's close enough and it sounds cool. So this is why everyone's like really excited about it. But this helical rising, um, a lot of people seem to be getting confused. At least that's what I found when I was Googling it. Because the helical rising date is different depending on where you are in the world. So while the helical rising of Sirius is in Egypt, in Cairo, on the 8th of the 8th, in Chicago... It's going to be on the 12th of August. So some people are like saying that it's not, um, you know, it's not in alignment with this 8-8 portal doesn't mean anything because the helical rising is just on like different random dates depending on where you are in the world. But it is on the 8th of the 8th in Cairo. So I was like, wow, okay, this is cool. This is so cool. So... The Sirius star for the ancient Egyptians was a really big deal. It was a really big deal. It was like one of their faves. Like they loved Sirius. And there's so many different reasons for this. Um, one thing that I found was this beautiful, and I haven't seen this anywhere else, um, but I found a quote that said Sirius star in ancient Egypt was considered to be the power behind the sun. So the Sirius star was almost like the great central sun, as we would call it in like the Ascension teachings. You know, it's like the power behind the sun. Um, and then I read that they, they said that the physical body was kept alive by the sun and the spiritual body was kept alive by Sirius. I don't know about you, but that's like, that really hit me in the in the star chakra, in the, like in the heart chakra. I was like, oh, wow. Okay. So this, like this, knowing this kind of adds this whole extra level and layer onto the Sirius star and like why it was so important to the ancient Egyptians and the fact that it's rising in ancient, in, in Egypt right now on the eighth of the eighth just feels very, very exciting, very magical. So Part of the reason that um, Sirius was really important to them as well is that there's a connection with the flooding of the Nile and the helical rising of Sirius. So back in ancient times, the helical rising, it's actually not, it does, it no longer coincides with the flooding of the Nile because of the, um, what's it called? The procession of the equinox. Again, I'm a little bit of a noob when it comes to astrology, but because of the procession of the equinox, things are shifting, right? Things have shifted quite a lot since then. So the rising of Sirius now doesn't align with the flooding of the Nile, but it used to, um, or so they say. And this was a big deal because the flooding of the Nile kind of sounds like a bad thing, but actually the ancient Egyptians had in place um, irrigation systems and they knew what to do when the, when the Nile rose and so they could use this this flooding of the Nile to really like kickstart their season to grow their crops to um to have water in the you know in the in their community and um it was such an important time for them so the connection with seeing that star at the same time that there was water everywhere 
this is part of the like abundance energy around it, right? The abundance energy of the lion's gate, because for the ancient Egyptians, this was a time that was all about abundance and growth. And so, you know, we want to tap into a little bit of that, right? We want to tap into that abundance and growth energy and think about how we can use that in our own lives. So there's more to, gosh, there's so much. I've written so many, so many notes. Um, But there's more to Sirius than, than just what I've mentioned so far. And a lot of what I'm going to say now is partly just from my own my own research my own thoughts and feelings um you don't have to take any of this on board if it's not doesn't resonate with you and at the end of the day we don't have any evidence for this this is just you know some of the stuff that um our star seeds like to get into and kind of think about so i am a bit of a fan of ancient astronaut theories And some of these series suggest that actually um, beings from Sirius were actually the gods of Egypt. So Thoth and Isis and all the Netaru were actually ancient aliens. (laughs) So whether or not you want to, you know, what you want to do with that is totally up to you. But there is, um, if you have a a look into the Dogon tribe, you will find that there's this amazing tribe of people in Africa who have this advanced technology, even though they're very tribal people, they have all this advanced technology um, and advanced wisdom when it comes to astrology and a whole bunch of other things as well and they know things that other cultures didn't figure out for like really really long time have a look into it research at the dogon tribe it's absolutely fascinating you can go down like such a rabbit hole i feel like i've said rabbit hole like 10 times in this in this episode but this stuff is just like I get so into it. Um, so have, have a look, research them because they say that beings from Sirius came to them and taught them all this stuff. And that's part of their, like part of their law. It's part of their law, L O I. It's part of their, you know, culture. It's part of their stories and their myths and their legends is that these beings from Sirius came and gave them this, gave them this information. And so, you know, if that happened, it wouldn't be so far-fetched to think that also beings from Sirius came to ancient Egypt, which isn't that far away from where the Dogon tribe are, and imparted some knowledge as well. So you can take, as I said, you can take or leave that. But I do think that's a really interesting kind of connection there. So when you start getting into all like the star seed kind of stuff, and we start talking about Sirius in terms of Oh, are we from there? Have we had incarnations in Sirius? The, the whole star seed thing is absolutely fascinating. But for me, I feel like it's way, way too simplified. Like when people say everyone from Sirius is blue, and like everyone from, um, you know, the Pallades is a healer. Um, for me, it's just like really, cause on earth, think about all of the different beings that we have here on earth, right? Like we have humans, but we also have cows and we have spiders and we have mushrooms and we have all of these different kind of beings here, these different, um, different life forms. So when people say, you know, everyone from Sirius is blue, I just, you know, take it with a grain of salt. But for my, for me and my personal experience with serious um i have been told by psychics and i have felt it in my own heart as well that i i do have a really strong connection with with serious with the serious star system and i feel like what i know about that is like a tiny little grain of sand compared to what you know is what is really going on (laughs) out there 
Um, but I remember for a really long time, I was really excited about the Pleiades and I really wanted to be Palladian. And I, I had this session with, with somebody who said to me that I was Syrian and I was, I remember being really like, disappointed and upset and felt like she was wrong you know like she's got this wrong because I'm definitely Palladian but the more I sat with that and the more research I did into Sirius and the more I connected with Sirius star beings and my Sirius star guides and and Thoth and Isis and all of the ancient Egyptian deities the more I felt like oh actually yeah maybe (laughs) maybe this is a better fit for me so this is very, very simplified, very simplified, but essentially the energy of this, of the Sirius star system, they're very into, um, wisdom, knowledge, technology, but not technology necessarily how we use it or how we work with it, but just a kind of, um, you know, the energy of technology, like how can we, create how can we use what we have and create something that is um is helpful and useful and can um spiritual technology as well it's like something that um we can kind of think about with that so they're very much into teaching learning studying they really want to learn things they really want to understand things they really want to kind of um they're very loving and like the you know all of the the star systems that we tend to work with as star seeds there's definitely this feeling of they're very loving whether or not every being (laughs) in these star systems is loving you know like we like to think oh earthlings are very loving humans are very loving and we absolutely can be but not you know not always um but the ascended series and this is what you want to do when you're working with any star beings whether you're working with the Syrians, the Palladians, whoever you want to work with, something that can be really useful is just to call on the ascended Syrians. You just say, I want to work with the ascended Syrians. And then you, you know, you'll get the ones who are like, (laughs) who are on the, you know, on the path, on the journey. So yeah, there's this real, there's this real kind of like mental sort of, um, energy with them where they're figuring things out and they're really kind of like they have a little bit more of the mental where the palladians are kind of a little bit more um feeling but this is like an an extreme generalization of just what i've experienced when i've gone into meditation with these beings and what you know sort of is generally um kind of known about these star systems I'm under no illusion that this is the be all and end all of what you know what's out there that for me when I go to Sirius in my meditations I always meet with Thoth Uh, I love going to Sirius and it looks a little bit to me when I go and you know this it's going to look different for everybody everyone's going to see it differently it's like saying oh well I went on a meditation to earth and I went to a field and it was beautiful it's like well you could have gone to a field you could have gone to a temple you could have gone to a forest you could have gone to the beach you know there's all these different places that we could go right and then when you're talking about a star system not only do you have okay well it could have been a temple or a beach or whatever it's like well it could be lots of different planets in that star system as well but whenever I go in meditation and we can also talk about it from the from the perspective of, well, are you really like going to Sirius as it is now, like the 3D physical Sirius? Or are you going to like a higher energetic vibration of Sirius? And it's like a whole thing too. But when I go, I see Thoth, I go to this beautiful temple and it's, it's really beautiful, but it also feels quite um, casual, relaxed. And it's this, and it feels very Egyptian. There's a real like Egyptian vibe about it too. Um, although there's like, you know, extra moons in the sky and, <laughs> and stuff like that. And I just go there and I just have chats with Thoth. And that's my, um, you know, that's my experience. And he's, he's told me that he is a, a being from Sirius. Again, you know, I don't know, maybe you work with him and he t- t- tells you something else and that's fine too. Um, I am not somebody that would ever say, well, I channeled it, so it, therefore it is. 
I think there are so many different things that we're channel channeling at different times that we need to hear different things at different times for different reasons. And that's the whole thing too. Anyway, I'm going off on a massive tangent about this, but let's go back to <laughs> Lionsgate and what you can do with it. So we've talked about a whole bunch of stuff. I thought this was going to be a short one. I always say that. Um, we've talked about a whole bunch of stuff here. We've talked about the Haligo rising of Sirius. We've talked about the Nile flooding. We've talked about the Syrian star beings and the Neturu, the ancient Egyptian gods and goddesses, prosperity. So the Lion's Gate is essentially this portal of all of this stuff of all of this stuff it's like the ancient ancient egyptian magic ancient egyptian deities that want to work with us and hold us and support us through this portal they want us to i really feel like they want us to let go of what's not serving us they want us to be effective in the world right they want us to be the change makers. They want us to change something. They want us to create new earth for want of, you know, a better phrase. Maybe we can do a whole podcast on what new earth actually is, um, what I think it is anyway. Um, so you've got this amazing alignment of Sirius, Egypt. You know, it's, um, it's really pretty exciting. And I just feel like at this time, we can tap into it easier, easier. We can always tap into this energy. So Lionsgate, you can tap into it anytime. If you're listening to this and it's like December, like whatever, you can still tap into this energy. You can still call on the Nedaru. You can still, um, for those who don't know, Nedaru just means the, the gods and goddesses of, of ancient Egypt. Um, you can call on them. You can visualize the portal opening anytime, right? We can go into whole thing about is time even real? Does time even exist? Why can't you visualize going through the Lionsgate portal at any day, any time? You can, you can. You can do the backpack visualization anytime that you want to. But at this time on 8-8, it's just like you've got this extra boost. So you've got this extra boost because the stars are literally in alignment. Sirius is literally, rising again over the Giza Plateau. Very, um, just very, very cool. So we have that going on in the sky. But we also have, what also happens with these portals is we have a collective kind of amplification of energy. So whenever you have a whole lot of people doing spell work, doing meditation, doing Kundalini yoga, you know, whatever people are doing, everyone's like, oh, it's 8-8, I've got to do something. It's like the full moon. Oh, it's the full moon. i got to put my crystals out. i got to do a spell. You get this amplification energy of like, okay, it creates a buzz. So even without the stars being in alignment and, um, you know, ancient Egypt and the the gods and goddesses and all this other stuff anytime you have a whole bunch of people even if this was all like bullshit right even if the the 8 8 thing was like actually i'd done all this research and i completely debunked it and it's not even in alignment and sirius isn't even there and like whatever even if it was like none of that was actually um happening but people still thought it was, then you still have this amplification of this energy. So you can still go, okay, well, everybody else is doing it. So I'll hang on to that and I'll do some something for myself as well. <laughs> so what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do? So I shared a little bit about my, uh, my practice, this visualization of like, you know, you're walking through the portal, you let go of what you don't need to... Um, what you no longer want to take with you, you set intentions, but you can really use this portal for anything. You can use any of these portals for anything. If you have some healing, you know, some heart healing and you're just like, I just want, my, I just want to heal my heart. I just want to like feel some healing. Then you can use this portal for your healing. If you're like, oh, I've got, you've got a thing that you really want to manifest. I've got a thing I really want to manifest. I'm going to see if I can do it in this portal. Um, you know, then you're just like, you focus your energy and your intention on that at this time. And you just go, okay, 
this is what I want, this is what I want, this is what I want. You write it down, you do some spells, you do some affirmations, whatever your thing is that you enjoy doing that, um, that works for you. You talk to people about it, you put it out there, you say what you want. Um, and saying that, you know, on 8-8, eight, eight, tell everybody what you want. <laughs> there's a whole lot of, and like, again, going off on a tangent here, but there's a whole lot of, like, people that will tell you, never tell anyone about your dreams because they'll just, like, laugh at you and they won't, um, you know, then you'll, they'll, like, harsh the energy and you won't be able to manifest it. And it's like, yeah, but what if you tell people and they're like, oh, actually, I know someone that could help you with that. You know, what if you're look, looking for a new job and you go, hey, I'm looking for a new job. And then someone knows someone and then you've got a new job, right? So be careful, like, you know, be discerning about who you tell. You might not want to just go out into the street and be like, I want a literary agent. <laughs> um, but that's something that I want. So I should do what I'm saying. So at the moment, I'm looking for a literary agent for my new novel, which is called Roxy the ghost and the bad boy at least that's the working title and yes it's about a girl who meets a ghost and um it's pretty cool anyway so put it out there like what do you want what are you looking for um really put it out there during this portal but you can use it for anything you can use it for anything whatever magic you're trying to make whatever healing you want to experience if you just want like more joy or more love or, um, you know, whatever you want, a really good thing that we can be doing at this time as well is just gratitude. Like the more gratitude we can cultivate over this time, the better. Other things you can do, talk to your spirit guides, talk to your angels, talk to the Netaru, talk to the gods and goddesses of ancient Egypt connect with them, sit with them, do some devotional practices to them, put up a picture. You can, um, if you have one of my Oracle decks that has like a bunch of the, the Netaru in there, we've got Isis, Thoth, Horus and Hathor in the first deck. And then we've got Mart in the second deck put them on your altar or just stick it, stick it somewhere where you can see it, light a candle, say a prayer. Um, send your love to them like that can be a really beautiful thing to do at this time as well but yeah essentially you can use this portal for anything <laughs> that's the gist basically so use it wisely um and that's it that's it that's all my thoughts on the my thoughts and my research on the uh, the 88 Lions Gate um also forgot to mention that there is a connection of course with Sekhmet, the lion goddess, um, and working with her could be really powerful as well. But she is, um, she's really not to be messed with. She's very, very powerful. And when you start to work with her, she really like, she doesn't, um, she won't take a shit basically. <laughs> like she will help you to shift and release what you no longer want, like nothing else. She'll just be like, give it to me, give it all to me. She'll look in your backpack and she'll be like, nah, you're not taking any of this. <laughs> she'll be like, all right, you can have this one thing. <laughs> um, she's fierce, she's fierce, but she's very powerful. So if you have a lot that you really want to clear and let go, she could be someone to work with as well. Um, so the final thing that I need to tell you about is that I am going to be hosting a workshop this Lions Gate. If you're watching this at a different Lions Gate, then it might still be on my website. It's called, what have I called it? Sound Codes, Syrian Sound Codes. And what we're going to do is we're going to gather in sacred space. We are going to do some witchy woo woo stuff together. We're going to pull some cards. We're going to do some journaling. We're going to go on a meditation to meet with your Syrian guides. And we're also going to do a little bit of breath work and a mantra, which on my searching, I have found that allegedly this mantra was chanted in ancient Egypt and in Atlantis. And these sound codes in this mantra have been shared for this really, really long time through all of these different ancient practices and into this Kundalini yoga lineage. 
So when I read that, I was like, Ooh, okay. Um, and actually really interesting thing happened when I was kind of starting to get the nudge to do this workshop. I was actually thinking about that mantra, which was kind of strange because it's not one that you'd necessarily put with the lion's gate. But then when I was looking at the lion's gate, um, I found this, this article that says it's got its origins in ancient Egypt and in Atlantis. So I was like, okay, that's good enough for me. Um, and with all of these things, you know, whether this is true, whether we could ever know this for sure, the intention is everything. So, you know, just having the intention when you chant these mantras that you're connecting with this energy can really make it happen. Okay, all of the links will be below on how you can join if you would like to um, come and experience some Syrian sound codes with me. And I just wish you an absolutely amazing, beautiful, powerful, prosperous, transformative landscape. Sending you lots and lots of love and I will see you next time.